Over the last 16 months, interest rates went from essentially zero in the beginning part of 2022 to over 5% in the middle part of 2023. The last time we saw interest rates break 5% was right before the 2008 crash, and when interest rates hit 5% then, well, those higher interest rates essentially caused the housing market to collapse. Now, there's a lot of different opinions as to where interest rates are going to go in the future, but we have Federal Reserve Bank officials that are still coming out and saying that interest rates are going to have to go even higher. And even Jamie Dimon, who's the CEO of the largest bank in America, JP Morgan Chase Bank, has come out and said that interest rates might be going up to 7%, so get prepared. Let me actually read you what he said. He said that I think everybody should be prepared for rates to go higher from here. You should be prepared for 6 or 7%. I should also point out that Jamie Dimon did give some warnings about the commercial real estate market and how they might be affected by higher interest rates, but I'll get to that a little bit later in this video. Now, just so we're on the same page, when I say interest rates are at above 5% today and Jamie Dimon says that they might be going to 6% or 7% in the future, I'm not talking about mortgage rates. I'm talking about the federal funds rate. See, interest rates, the federal funds rate, are the interest rates that the Federal Reserve Bank sets. The Federal Reserve Bank is the central bank here in the United States, and they have the ability to set what's called interest rates. Now, these interest rates that the Fed sets is not the interest rate that you have to pay as a borrower. These are interest rates that banks have to pay to borrow money. You can think of it kind of like the wholesale price that banks get to borrow money at. The banks get to borrow money at a certain price, and then they jack up this price, and then they give you the retail price. Just like when you go to Walmart or you go to whatever grocery store, you go and pay the retail price, the grocery store pays the wholesale price. So this interest rate that I'm talking about is the wholesale rate, the interest rate that banks have to pay to borrow money. And so when interest rates go higher for banks, they naturally have more pressure to raise interest rates to you. So when interest rates go up, that puts upward pressure on things like mortgage rates, car loan payments, credit card rates, all types of interest rates end up going up because, well, the wholesale price that banks have to borrow money at also goes up. The reason why the challenges that we're facing are so unique right now is because most of us, myself included, have never lived through a time of true quantitative tightening. The last time we've seen true quantitative tightening was after the inflation that we saw in the 1970s and early 1980s. After that, we've been in an era of quantitative easing. And what that means is we've been in an era since the 1980s of loose money, low interest rates, and easy access to capital, meaning money entering our economic system. And that makes for an economic growth period because when you have more money entering the economic system, well, there's more money for people to buy things. Think of it like stimulus checks. If stimulus checks are going to people, people have more money to spend. Now, this quantitative easing isn't just in the form of stimulus checks, but it's in the form of spending. When the government spends more money, they can create more jobs. They can hire more contractors. They can pay more things because they can pay for more services. That's quantitative easing because it's creating more money that's entering our economic system. And right now, because of all the high inflation that we're facing, we are seeing the opposite happen. We are seeing quantitative tightening. Now, quantitative tightening is a couple things happening. Right now, what we're facing is the higher interest rates. The higher interest rates are there to reduce demand for products. The reason why we're facing high inflation is, one, because the government printed all this money with the help of the Federal Reserve Bank, so this created a lot of demand for things. A lot of money was printed and created, trillions and trillions of dollars. Some of this money was given to people. Some of this money was given to corporations. Some of this money was given to banks and institutions. Some of this money was given to the government. But a lot of institutions, people, and entities had money. Now, when you have money, what do you do? Well, you spend it. People took this money and they started shopping at Amazon, Lululemon, wherever. Businesses took this money and they started well, buying more factories, opening more places, starting new divisions. And we saw institutions take this money, banks and institutions take this money and start investing into real estate. They started investing into startups. And so we saw a lot of money flow into our economic system, which contributed to the economic boom that we saw in 2020, 2021, and even into 2022. Then in 2022, things changed when the Federal Reserve Bank started the shift. They started shifting from quantitative easing to quantitative tightening because in quantitative easing, it was cheap interest rates and a lot of access to easy money. Well, when the Federal Reserve Bank started raising interest rates, they said that they're now going to shift from this quantitative easing to quantitative tightening, which means 
higher interest rates and less free money out there. So now when you're a business that's been relying on super cheap debt, or when you're an institution that's been getting money very easily, that way you can invest into other startups, you didn't really need a very big return to justify the spending that you were doing. Today, with interest rates significantly higher than where they were 12 months ago or 16 months ago, it's a completely different decision. Businesses are cutting back on spending. Banks and institutions are cutting back on lending. We're seeing people cutting back on spending. It's completely changing the dynamic of our economy, and our economy runs on, well, spending. When people have more money, they can spend more, which allows the economy to grow faster, right? When you go and you spend more money at Sweetgreen, Sweetgreen makes more money. They can open more stores and hire more employees. If you don't have the money to go out and buy a salad at Sweetgreen, they're not going to be able to afford more employees or open more stores. And so when you have an economy that runs on spending, when you have more money in the economic system, people have the ability to spend more. But when you're seeing the tightening, like we're seeing happen now, people's ability to spend reduces Businesses' ability to spend cuts down, and institutions' ability to invest also shrinks. This is where now we're starting to see a lot of different opinions about what might be coming next, because we have some people saying that interest rates are gonna go down. The Fed has to start cutting interest rates. Why? Because, well, we haven't seen interest rates this high for a long time, and it's hard to sustain interest rates this high. Although, historically, the interest rates that we're seeing right now are still not historically high. On the other end, we have people saying the Fed is going to have to raise interest rates even more because in order to bring inflation down, the Fed has to be more aggressive with the higher interest rates. However, the higher interest rates have a cost, and that cost is a slowdown in the economy because higher interest rates make borrowing money much more expensive, and it reduces spending. When you reduce spending, that slows down the economy, and we're already seeing an economic slowdown so the question is, how much pain is the Federal Reserve Bank willing to endure? And this is where now you have entities like JP Morgan Chase Bank talking about how you better be prepared for even higher interest rates. Now, we've been covering all of this in Market Briefs. Market Briefs is my free financial newsletter, and this is why if you haven't joined yet, I highly recommend you do so because you don't want to be blindsided by what's happening in the economy. We're working to keep you up to date with unbiased news daily. It's a free newsletter that you get six times a week. So if you haven't joined Market Briefs yet, it's a super fun read. It's easy to read and it's completely free. And I got the link to how you can join down in the description below. The issue is while inflation has come down off of its highs, it's still extremely high. Remember, the Federal Reserve Bank wants to see inflation come down to 2%. We're still significantly higher than that. And this is where the Federal Reserve Bank has been saying that they want to do whatever it takes to bring inflation down. However, now that we're seeing pain in the economy, they're now facing this dilemma that we've been talking about for the last 18 months, that when you raise interest rates, it's going to hurt the economy. And now, what is going to break first? Is it going to be the economy or is it going to be inflation? And the dilemma here is so important because, well, we know how to fix a hurting economy. Recessions happen. They've happened pretty much every decade for the last century. That's a part of our economic system. But inflationary issues are so much more significant because if you cannot get inflation under control, you can cause so much more pain to the economy. Inflation disproportionately hurts the working class, it disproportionately hurts the middle class, and it disproportionately hurts the poor. And so now, if you don't get inflation under control, not only do you hurt the average person in America, but you can also potentially risk a currency crisis, and that is significantly more devastating than a economic slowdown or a recession. And this is where now the Federal Reserve Bank is working to make sure we prevent a currency crisis, but they also don't want to see a recession. So the question is, what are they going to do in the future? And even with the interest rates where they are right now, this is going to have consequences in our economy. One of the things that Jamie Dimon, who is the CEO of Chase Bank, said was pay attention to what's going on in the commercial real estate market because the commercial real estate market has a lot of red flags flashing right now because of the higher interest rates. Let me read you what he said. The offsides in this case will probably be real estate. It'll be certain locations, certain office properties, certain construction loans. It could be very isolated. It won't be every bank. Let me explain what that means because in the commercial real estate market, the way it works is you don't go out and get a 30 year fixed rate mortgage when you wanna go out and buy a commercial office building. You go out and you get an adjustable rate mortgage because that's the standard for commercial real estate loans. So now if you wanna go out and buy a $10 million or a $100 million or a billion dollar office building, 
you're going to go out and get an adjustable rate mortgage, which is going to readjust every three years, every five years, maybe every seven years, but most, I would say around that three to five year range. So now, if you went out and you bought an office a number of years ago, and you had a lot of debt on this property, like many commercial landlords do, well, that's not a big deal if interest rates go up because generally what you would do is you would just raise the rents of your tenants. That way now you can support the higher expenses. That's kind of the way it works in commercial real estate that when your costs go up, you just pass it down to your tenants. Well, the issue right now, especially in office real estate, is a lot of offices are sitting vacant or partially vacant. And a lot of companies are starting to downsize because of the new remote and hybrid work lifestyle. And yeah, a lot of companies are asking their employees to come back, but you're not seeing every office building fill up the way that it was before. Not to mention that we're seeing a lot of companies start to downsize themselves because, well, they grew too big too fast over the last few years. So now what we have is we have a lot of office buildings that are sitting half vacant, completely vacant or partially vacant. And now these landlords who own these buildings are seeing their debts readjust in the coming 24 months. And not just the fact that they're readjusting, but they're going to readjust significantly higher. In some cases, almost double interest rates where they were before. Which means if you see your monthly payments rise by 50% and your landlord sitting on this office building that's not producing any income, you can't raise your rents because you can't get more tenants in there. And the tenants that are there are not going to be able to pay or willing to pay the higher rents. And so this is where Jamie Dimon is saying, well, if you have all these landlords that then become underwater on these properties that they cannot support the monthly payments, they might be forced to sell these properties. And the second issue is there might not be enough buyers. For one, because people might not want to buy these properties. And number two, because the lending might also be slowing down. Let me read you what he said. You're already seeing credit tighten up because the easiest way for a bank to retain capital is not to make the next loan. This is tying in now what's going on in the banking sector. See, when people go out and they buy these commercial real estate buildings, they're getting money from banks. And we're seeing a lot of pain in the banking sector right now. And the reason why we're seeing pain is because a lot of banks are sitting on underwater assets. And these underwater assets are bonds, AKA loans. And to give you a little bit of backstory on this, I've covered this in multiple videos. So I'm not going to go too deep into this right now, but banks are in the business of lending. And when in the last couple of years, they went out and bought a lot of bonds. These bonds were valued at a certain price. And when interest rates go up, bond values tend to go down. They're inversely correlated. And so over the last 24 months and 12 months and 18 months where interest rates have risen, bond values have gone down, which means banks have been sitting on a lot of bonds, a lot of assets that are now worth less what they paid for them. So they're underwater on a lot of their investments, which means that banks have been kind of struggling to go out and raise more money because they're underwater on their investments. And so now to shore up some of their capital, what they're doing is, well, not lending as much money. This is the credit tightening up process. So now look at what's going on in the commercial real estate market, where Jamie Dimon is saying that he expects more sellers to want to sell their commercial real estate properties, especially over the next 24 months, if interest rates continue to stay high because a lot of landlords might not be able to continue making the payments. Now, in order for them to sell these properties, they're going to need buyers. Okay, well now the buyer has to be interested in buying this property and then the buyer also has to be able to get the financing. And if we continue to see the higher interest rates, not only is that going to put pressure on the commercial real estate market, but that's also going to put pressure on the banking sector. And so you might have a buyer that's interested in buying a property, but they might not be able to get financing. So what he's saying is the hurdles now for the commercial real estate market are starting to add up because for one, landlords are going to be underwater, especially in the coming 24 months if interest rates continue to stay high. This is a big if because we don't know where interest rates are going to go. That's where market briefs will be keeping you posted every single day. But commercial real estate is here. We don't know where interest rates are going to go. But if interest rates stay high, that's going to put down pressure on commercial real estate. Then you also have the issue of people being able to secure financing because of the issues in the banking sector. Because if interest rates also stay high, that's also going to put more pressure on the banking sector and that's going to make it much harder for them to continue making new loans, which then ultimately comes down to 
Well, what does that mean for the commercial real estate market? And that's the concern and warning that Jamie Dimon was talking about. And this is right now, you want to be paying attention to what's going on with inflation, interest rates, and the economy. Now, I know this is something I've been saying for almost two years now, but we're really starting to see these things culminate and come together now. And this is where you want to be preparing. I've said this, I don't know how many times, but I'm going to say this again. 2023 is not the year for you to go out and finance a new truck. 2023 is the year for you to get financially smart, learn about money, put money aside. That way, one, you can protect yourself. And then also, two, take advantage of opportunities that might come your way. And that starts by right now, you understanding this, learning, and building your finances. That way, you can protect yourself and take advantage of opportunities that might come your way. Everybody is holding their breath in the economy right now. It feels like every week, more and more institutions are coming out and saying or forecasting a recession is coming in the economy, which brings up a tough question. Should you begin investing today or should you wait for markets to crash and then come in and buy at a discounted price? And the reason why this question is so difficult to